Are you compulsively eating excessive amounts of food past the point of feeling full, usually in a very short time frame, and you feel really guilty afterward? Surgery is just one tool. It's time to put the other tools in the toolbox because it's your body, your health, your life. Finding it difficult to control your eating af even after bariatric surgery? Are you struggling with understanding the relationship, your relationship with food? Be honest, have you ever thought, even just for a quick little moment, who I am depends on how much I weigh? The fact that you've recognized that there is a problem is an excellent sign that you're ready to embrace it in a different way. You know that feeling. Before surgery, there was a many a day where I just ate uncontrollably. I just could not stop, even to the point where I was sick and I still kept going. Now, even after surgery, after a little bit, the binge monster is rearing its ugly head again. In this video, we're gonna talk about what binge eating really is, how to prevent it, what to do after you, immediately after you have a binge, and then how to handle it long term. If you are really, really serious, really serious about tackling binge eating so that it doesn't continue to harm all the hard work you've done after weight loss surgery, then stick around, pause, grab a pen, because I got a lot of good stuff in here. But first, you can't really stop binge eating until you really kind of get an understanding of it. Put very simply, binge eating is just eating out of control, uncontrollably. There are many reasons why a person binge eats. Here are a few. Do some of these resonate with you? Coping with a negative body image. Underlying emotional stress. Unconscious trauma triggers. And just simply out of boredom or the fact that there is food right there. People with a binge eating disorder, myself included, struggle with feeling in control when eating. Now this doesn't happen every time you eat. There's times you know if you are a binge eater, you know those uncontrollable times. You feel powerless and you feel like you can never stop. You think about food all the time and you feel pretty guilty or even severely depressed after eating. There are two types of binge eating episodes. One is the objective binge eating episode and the other is subjective binge eating episode. So let's kind of get an understanding of what that means. Objective binge eating episodes is when you're eating excessive amounts of food, probably over 2000 calories in a very short time, like within two hours. The whole episode, eating episode, feels like you're on total autopilot. You're gorging yourself fast and furious. You're barely taking a break or even breathing in between. The fridge just keeps calling you and you keep going back no matter what you tell yourself. The next one is subjective binge eating episode. And this is where you're, you're eating, but you think you're eating all these excessive amounts of calories, but really in reality, you're not. But that same sense of out of control is still there. Other characteristics of binge eating episodes are, no matter what the food item is, you're feeling at that moment like it's a forbidden food item. Typically, it's usually higher in calorie and it's pretty palatable, like you're enjoying the experience. You're eating at a quicker rate than you normally eat. You're eating when you're not even physically hungry. You're feeling pretty, you know, pretty extreme pleasure or some kind of pleasure when you're eating at the time, but you get pretty overwhelmed with immense guilt and shame and judgment after you're done eating. And you also kind of feel a sense of secrecy to your behavior. Like for example, you hide food wrappers in the bottom of the garbage container, or maybe you eat in the secrecy of your car, or maybe you're hiding food. For example, what I would do is I'd be cleaning up but then I would be shoveling it into my mouth, like hoping that no one's hearing me or seeing me. You know when you're hiding it from other people. So first thing, prevention is key. There are a variety of methods that can help you 
prevent cravings and possibly those unhealthy eating habits. Here is a list of tips to help you prevent binge eating. One of the best ways to address binge eating, believe it or not, is meal planning. Planning your meals ahead of time helps you to get a sense of control of what you're gonna eat and maybe even when you're gonna eat. It helps control portions, which was a big one for me, portions always before surgery and even after surgery. But also it helps you, meal planning helps you kind of plan for a nutritionally balanced meal, like whatever that means for you. It takes out that kind of impromptu, spontaneous, oh my God, I don't have anything to eat. What am I going to eat now? Like when you have that craving, especially when you have that craving, be it you're physically craving or you're mentally craving head hunger. It's that if you have a meal plan, you have something prepared before you, instead of kind of succumbing to that crazy binge monster voice that's yelling at you now at that point. Planning your meals gives you something to look forward to. You don't have to make it boring. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing every single day, but it helps you feel in control and have something that you can look forward to because you know that you've planned it. It's something that is going to be good for you. And you know, it also helps you prevent skipping a meal. Some of us are subjective to that. We skip a meal when we don't have something in front of us. And then that just, as we know, usually doesn't help us with our cravings later on. We know that a food journal, and I, I'm going to be honest here. I knew about this even before surgery, but I have realized the importance of journaling no matter what. But a food journal, especially at the very beginning, or if you're subjective to emotional stress eating, binge eating, is to keep a food journal because what you're doing is you're being honest with yourself, you're being accountable, but you're also seeing how and when you eat. How many times before surgery or even after surgery, but before surgery, I would think, oh, I know what I'm eating during the day. And then I would actually take the time and write it all down. I was amazed. Oh, it's amazing what lies we tell ourselves during the day if we're not tracking. So keeping a journal is super important when you're subject to binge eating. There is evidence that people who track just are more successful with binge eating as well as weight loss surgery in general. Increase your protein intake. We know that not every time, but a lot of the times binge eating is because we're just overly hungry at the moment. And we're just immediately feeling like we have to respond really quickly to that hunger. One way to combat that is to, be, is to feel satisfied. And part of that is increasing your protein intake. Protein helps us feel satisfied. Protein makes you feel full, which just, generally helps you to feel like you can conquer the next few hours until your planned next meal. Reduce your sugar intake and your refined carb intake. Sugar, refined carbs, what it does to our body, just really generally biologically, it increases our blood sugar, our glucose levels. It also, which then increases our insulin, which then increases inflammation in the body. All of that makes you hungry it makes you crave but i really suggest that you be a super detective when it comes to hidden sugar and hidden carbs really look at the ingredients that you're eating because there is something like over 75 different labels for sugar and you can have multiple amounts and versions of those sugar labels in your food so it's super important to understand what that is, but also to understand what's included in those products that you're eating. You might not even be aware that you're eating a lot of sugar and a lot of refined carbs. Get plenty of sleep. It's just, I know it sounds simple, but if you don't sleep or get a good quality of sleep, you just wake up with cravings and you just are more hungry. Typically when that happens and you're, you're almost developing a pattern of bad sleeping, is that those cravings, really, you're craving sugar, you're craving carbs, because we know, even subconsciously, that that will boost energy and boost mood. But it's a very short-term boost. So getting plenty of sleep, as well as quality of sleep, helps you to control your mood. It helps you to lose weight, believe it or not. And it also helps to balance your energy levels. So you don't 
or you're not subjective to those high carb, high sugar cravings. Also, there's many studies on sleep and how that affects your hunger hormones. It will really depend on you and your situation, but if you find a good range of quality sleep, somewhere between eight and 12 hours. We know that regular exercise, and I'm not saying your gym membership or training for a marathon, just walking simply movement, physical activity every day helps you to improve your mood. It also helps to improve sleep. It also will relieve stress. The more relaxed you are, the less stress you have, the more your energy level will uh, sustain versus have the peaks and, and lows, which will help you to avoid emotional eating, or at the very least, help you to kind of find the activities that distract you from binge eating. Exercise, movement, physical activity. We know deep down that it just provides a better quality of life. It improves our lifestyle, which may empower us to live a healthier life moving forward. Staying hydrated, I don't think this gets enough attention, but staying hydrated will help you with food cravings. It keeps you feeling full and more satisfied longer so you can get to your next meal time. Drinking water before meals can help you feel more satisfied and decrease the hunger cravings and then hopefully help you to eat less or at least eat more controlled. Many times when people think they're hungry, they're actually thirsty. So try drinking water, staying hydrated first before you turn to food. Do some of you take extreme measures to keep yourself from eating in attempt to stop the binge eating? Some people skip meals to eat less. There are consequences though of having a pattern of skipping meals. This includes lowering your metabolism. It will eventually impair your mental focus. It could lead to dizziness. It will lead to weight gain if you keep doing that because your body is actually thinking it's starving. So it'll hold on to water, it'll hold on to weight. It's a survival technique that your body, that's a normal thing for your body to do. So if you have a pattern of skipping meals all the time, irregular random skipping meals or uh, long-term skipping meals, then this, you could be subject to um, holding on to weight, which goes against exactly what we're trying not to do. And this kind of the intention behind this, that you're skipping meals because you think that will help you um, with avoiding the binge eating episodes really starts to become a mental situation. It might become a pattern and lead to other health, unhealthy behaviors. With that being said, skipping meals, not a good thing to do. Don't graze all day either. Like don't be eating all day long. You know that grazing where you wake up and you take a little bite here, a little bite here, a little bite here. You're not really eating meals, but you're grazing all day long. That does not help you when it comes to binge eating as well. Constant snacking just forces your body because typically what are you snacking on? Are you snacking on carrots all day? Are you snacking on celery all day? Are you snacking on steak all day? Typically you're snacking on higher refined carbs or hidden sugars those kind of palatable things that we talked about, constant snacking is just going to lead to more, more, and more. Do you find yourself eating out of boredom? I did it. I still kind of am subject to it. I have to be very, very um, honest with myself. If I'm hungry and I have these instant cravings and I know it could, that kind of uncontrollable thinking about an item, I have to ask myself, am I, am I actually bored? When you're bored, as simple as it sounds, try to distract yourself. Now this will be different for every person, but here's some ideas. Take a walk, call a friend, listen to music, take a bath, read, start a hobby, gardening, painting, learning to play an instrument. Whatever that is for you, when you kind of have that instant craving, ask yourself, am I really bored? And then for at least 15 minutes, Try to distract yourself and see, does that feeling really kind of go away? Is it kind of give you a clue? Oh, I'm not really that hungry at this moment. Many times binge eating is kind of that state of not being present in the moment, like that mindless, mindless eating. It's really important when you are hungry or you are starting to crave to kind of 
Bring your mind back into your body. Be very mindful at that moment. Paying attention to what you're feeling, what you're thinking, and what you're eating at the moment can help you to kind of address binge eating, or at least put a little buffer before you start binge eating. Being mindful helps you to slow down. It slows actually a lot of body. It regulates your body systems. Maybe you can try enjoying what you're eating. And as we know, we've been taught, the longer you can eat, your body kicks in with your mind. It kind of works together to understand and realize you're full. Even if you catch yourself binge eating, you can stop. You don't have to continue. Stop, try to stop and focus. What are you eating? Why are you eating this? What led up to it? What's going on right now? Where am I? And really, as simply as it sounds, make each bite a decision. Stop after a few bites and check in with yourself again. Be present. A simple one, but very, very important, pretty effective, is remove temptation. Now I know we are in households where that might be easier said than done, but whenever possible, it makes sense. Remove the temptations for you. Binge eating can be triggered by certain foods, which is called a trigger food. Now each trigger food for each person is a little different. It could be attached to memories. It can be attached to feelings, but a trigger food usually will cause you to go into a binge eating episode and of course, regret it later. So simply put, to avoid this trigger food, don't buy it. Don't have it near you. Remove the temptation. You know if you do not have direct access to them, you are less likely to be triggered into a binge eating episode. Now, I get this. It's hard. I sometimes, I have a trigger food. Um, for me, it's macadamia nuts, believe it or not. I don't know what the deal is. I just can't control it. So sometimes um, I've asked my husband not to buy it, which I feel really bad because he really likes them. Um, but when he does buy them, I've asked him in the past to actually hide it on me. And I mean hide it because I'm a pretty good, I'm, this is not my first rodeo. I can find foods if I know they're in the house. Ideally, if they're not in the house, it helps because I can't find something that isn't there. But I will ask my husband to hide it and hide it good. Try to replace First of all, try to figure out what your trigger foods are. You might have to take a moment, sit down, and really think about what those trigger foods are. Write them down so that you are clear in your mind what they are. And then try to replace them. This might take time and effort, and you might have to do a little searching, but try to replace those trigger foods. Um, if possible, maybe you can make them more healthier, uh, less unhealthy if possible, or replace them with healthier options. As important as it's going to sound, but maybe easier said than done, it's really important to talk to someone in the moment when you have that urge to binge. Talking to someone you trust, who will not be critical of you, who will not to say, just don't do it. Just don't do it. That doesn't help anyone. We know that. But if you, in the moment, you feel like you're going to have a binge eating episode, or maybe you just kind of initially started and now you're getting mindful uh, try to talk to someone you can trust about your cravings. By talking it through, sharing it with them, just having someone listen helps you to get past the point. And in addition to friends and family that are supportive of you, if need be, you need to call a helpline. There are many helplines that actually are for this reason, purposely for binge eating, emotional eating, and stress eating. I will put a list here or down and below on some of those hotlines that you can call. We know that the best way to get over binge eating is to understand the underlying behavior and thoughts behind the binge eating. It's not the food. It's not the food. You know that it's not the food. It's what's triggering you. It's what's underlying and what's happening behind the scenes. Because binge eating kind of does go hand in hand with other substance abuse disorders. <music> So you've done it, you've binge needed it, what can you do now? Let's focus on some things that may help you after, immediately after one of those binge eating episodes. These strategies might be helpful for you in the moment right after you've binged, 
but also it'll help you kind of prevent it for future. It'll show you patterns and maybe help you with to deal with the emotions and thoughts that are behind it. So what to do right after a binge, believe it or not, is stick to your plan. Two fundamental strategies to break binge eating is, is self-monitoring, being present, being in the moment and self-monitoring, and, and eating at regular flexible intervals. So self-monitoring, if done properly and thoroughly, is very useful because it provides information about the nature of your binge eating while regular eating. Especially as bariatric patients, especially after right after weight loss surgery, we have strict guidelines that most of us are following. So we're either in a food stage, a food phase, or maybe we're past the healing phase and now we're kind of back to solids and we're trying to figure it all out. So this is where we need to be very clear and mindful on what to do to prevent, but also when you just had a binge eating um, episode is to kind of what was your plan before and you need to get back on it. So this is a time not to go into that guilt, shame and judgment and then into the avoidance because I know what a binge means that you've had a huge binge eating episode and then the next thing you know, and literally this has happened to me, the next thing you know, it's two weeks later, it's two months later, it's a decade later. This is going to give you vital information. You're going to have to uh, really look at what's going on. If you really, really seriously want to kick binge eating or at least understand what's going on is that you have to be honest with yourself. You have to self-monitor and you have to be self-reflective on like what's going on. So self-monitoring, writing it down right after a binge, what all happened here? Write it, write your own story. It'll help you to see patterns and then be able to kind of look forward, tweak things, understand how to break that cycle. At the same time as you're self-monitoring, stick, go back to your regular eating schedule. Don't do that. I'll start again tomorrow. Don't do that. I'm going to start Monday. Immediately after the binge, you write everything down, just verbal vomit onto a piece of paper, and then you're going to go immediately back to your your regular eating schedule, whatever that is for you. Also, if you've binged, like say during the middle of the day, this doesn't mean that you go, okay, I'm done eating for the day. Don't, don't start doing the skipping the meals thing as well. Don't punish yourself that way. Feeling a little guilt and shame is normal, but get back to your regular eating plan. Whatever that is, you're going to go back, back in control. You don't want that experience of the guilt and the shame and your mind working that way, beating yourself up to take hold. If you do that whole thing like, oh, I'll start again tomorrow. Oh my God, what did I do right now? I feel so bad. And it just compounds. And the next thing you know, it's a three hour binge. It's a five hour binge. It's a two week binge. Remember, we fuel our bodies because it needs the food to do the things we want it to do. I know right after a binge and say the next hour is supposed to be your regular eating plan, do it anyways. I know you might not get the whole meal in, but try as much as you can. You're not at this moment, you're not eating out of hunger. You're actually eating to get yourself regulated and back on a plan mentally and physically. Don't sit in your shame and guilt. Sitting in it, sinking in it, over being overwhelmed by it is just going to lead to more binging or the extreme case of compensating for that binging. Distracting yourself, doing something in the meantime to get past, to put some time in between your binge and feeling back in control is super important to be present, be purposeful, because eventually you're gonna put enough time in there, enough time in between, so you can move on past the binge eating episode and focus on the more important things in life. So here are some steps to think about, okay, how can I address binge eating long term? Step one, take a step back and really observe your behavior. So this is where you've kind of, you're not in the binge eating episode anymore. Uh, you're kind of feeling in control. You do know that you're subject to binge eating episodes. You're monitoring, you're doing all the things, but this is at the time where you're feeling a little control and you're making a plan 
on moving forward and how to deal with this long-term. Really being honest with the details because when you're in the moment or when you're subject to that, you know, something's coming down the road, the binge monster is following you, um, you can't remember those details. So it's important to self-monitor, write it down. When you're recording, it's really important to record the, the date and time, what you ate, and even what you drank. Where were you? Where are you? Do you actually view it as a binge? And then rate it. Was it, you know, whatever your rating system is, one to 10 on that scale, what that binge, what was your latest binge? How, how bad was it for you? And then any other things that help you to understand what's going on with that behavior behind the binge eating? What was your sleep patterns going on? What was your energy level? Who was around you? Did you have a triggering conversation with someone? How was work that day? Were the kids crazy? Anything that was going on, any details that you can do, even if you think they're direct or indirect um, part of what's going on, it's important to write these things down. So stay, take a step back, observe yourself. Once you get kind of some real good data that you've done, you're going to see patterns and you're going to know, oh, okay, something is triggering me. That comes up again. You're going to know how to handle it a little bit better. At least you're going to be self-aware that, oh, this is something that triggers me. And the next thing I know, I'm in a binge eating episode. So it's really important to give you some really good data. And you're the only one that can gather that data. If you don't monitor, you're kind of going in blind. And you're just kind of hoping you'll address the issues that makes you do binge eating or emotional eating. You know, this is clearly inefficient. Step two, are you eating consistently? Are you subject? Are you starting to become that person? that's doing those uh, dieting behaviors, and we all know a diet does not work. Are you doing those dieting behaviors that don't work for us? Example, you're delaying eating, or you're skipping meals, or you're snacking all day long, or you're doing some kind of restrictive thing, or you're really just full-blown doing calorie restriction, like you're starving yourself, you're skipping meals at an extreme rate, you're just under eating. Studies have shown there is research out there to prove that those kind of behaviors, that kind of mindset, that kind of thinking can lead to binge eating, but also other negative, unhealthy outcomes, psychological impairment, mental health issues, depression, and just overall anxiety. Eating regularly, being flexible with that will help you gain more control and just help you to eliminate that whole diet thinking behavior. Diets did not work for us before surgery. They're not gonna work for us after surgery. They're short term, they don't do anything except restrict your mind and restrict your body physically. The whole goal is to sustain energy, sustain mood, sustain, maintain, find a balance throughout the day so we don't have these ups and downs, these peaks and valleys. And just summarizing, plan, plan, plan. Plan your meals, plan your events, plan your thinking. The whole goal is to eventually get your mind and body to connect so that you can do something called intuitive eating. So you really know the difference between your physical hunger, your head hunger. And this is only gonna be assured by planning, by putting the time and energy into it, by self-monitoring, and knowing that we can get to a point where we can really understand, okay, I'm really, really hungry right now. I'm gonna fuel my body with healthy choices so that I can get that momentum, I can get that sustained energy and just feel good and actually physically be well. For some of us, we're just really gonna to have to address our problems head on. Effective problem solving is a really good idea. And it's not just an innate skill that we have. Sometimes we have to teach ourselves how to problem solve. Believe it or not, binge eating is pretty predictable. It usually happens after being super restricted, an all or nothing kind of mindset, or we broke some kind of rules in our head, or we've been triggered. Our mood has hit an extreme. It starts to fluctuate and intensify. Working through tough times, understanding the behavior, the triggers, the trauma behind it will help to prevent future episodes of binge eating. We know that sometimes our problems are just so overwhelming 
and feel impossible to solve. So that's where professional help might have to come into play. But don't forget, you're not alone. A lot of people go through this. You're not alone. There's professionals out there that are trained to help you. Meditation can be super helpful when it comes to tackling the behavior of binge eating. It's a real powerful tool. And meditation to you could be all kinds of things. It could be yoga. It could be just listening to music. It could be praying. It could be whatever you need it to be. But the powerful tool behind meditation is that it regulates your body. It helps you deal with sudden stressors and anxieties. It forces you to kind of sit back and relax, which helps you to better recognize, accept, and problem solve. Really try to deal with your kind of nasty forbidden food list. Maybe these foods trigger memories, grief, anxiety. Being aware just will help you diminish the blind anxiety you might have around it, give you back some control, and help you start enjoying and understanding why a more rounded eating lifestyle to help you fuel your body, which will lead to a better life. Don't expect success overnight. There's no quick fix to weight loss surgery success. There's no quick fix. There's no special diet. There's no silver bullet. There's no magical thinking. All of this takes time. And then the other kind of thing is that you do really need to start enjoying joyful activities, especially after weight loss surgery. You got to move away. You got to start moving away from that intensive focus on your weight, food, so that you can start shaping your self-worth in other ways. So think about activities. Do these activities that bring you joy, happiness, and that actually interest you. Make a list of these. Be creative. Brainstorm. Which one are you going to commit to trying? The point of these activities is to give you more meaning to your life, independent of your weight, your shape, and what food you eat. The more time and effort you put into these activities that give you joy, happiness, bliss even, you really start to realize what is more important in your life. And food starts to be one of those things that is down at the bottom of the list. So moving forward, moving forward with trying to tackle binge eating, as I said, takes time and effort. You have to be patient. But I believe if you take that time, you put in that effort, you ask for help, you will see improvements in the binge eating, but also your overall health, both mentally and physically, and of course, emotionally. Remember, asking for help is a sign of bravery. Be brave if you have to be. Transformation, whatever that is, if you've watched my videos, you've heard me say it before, transformation equals information and taking action. You need both of those to get transformation, to get to your results. And I believe that taking action, you will find the courage on the other side of taking action. Eating disorder experts, addiction specialists, general therapy, support groups will have strategies and the experience and the training to offer that I on YouTube just don't have. You know this isn't about food. Binge eating is not about food. It's what's behind the food. And really, sometimes it takes a professional to help you get at the root cause of that. What are you finding to be the most challenging regarding your eating habits? after having bariatric surgery. Put it down in the comments. You got this. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.